Hello everyone, my name is Jared Beckwith. I'm a registered EEG technologist that works with all types of epilepsy patients. And here's my presentation on temporal lobe epilepsy. Temporal lobe epilepsy is one of the most common focal seizure disorders in existence. The temporal lobe is found on the sides of the brain, as you can see from this diagram. The Epilepsy Foundation says that temporal lobe epilepsy usually begins around age 10 or 20, but it can honestly start at any age. Usually a person has had a seizure with fever or an injury to their brain in their early years. Those are two factors that definitely contribute to someone developing temporal lobe epilepsy. In 1981, the International League Against Epilepsy recognized the two different types of temporal lobe epilepsy. Mesial temporal lobe epilepsy involves the medial or internal structures of the temporal lobe, and seizures often begin in a structure of the brain called the hippocampus, which is where a lot of your memory is stored, or a surrounding area. Mesial temporal lobe epilepsy accounts for almost 80% of all temporal lobe seizures, so if a patient has temporal lobe epilepsy, it's most likely going to be the mesial temporal lobe epilepsy type. And there's also neocortical or lateral temporal, temporal lobe epilepsy, which involves the outer part of the temporal lobe. Here are some of the symptoms of a patient that has temporal lobe epilepsy. In patients who are aware and awake during their seizures, they are called focal aware seizures or simple partial seizures. Those are two different names that they can be called. These patients will have what is known as an aura, which common ones are feelings of deja vu or some upset stomach. Also feelings of fear, panic, anxiety, a rising sensation coming from the stomach to the chest or throat, or butterflies with nausea or other common auras. People may also sense an unusual smell. This symptom may raise the possibility of a lesion or tumor in the hippocampus of the temporal lobe. Some temporal lobe epilepsy patients are unconscious during their seizures, and these are called focal impaired awareness seizures or complex partial seizures. During this type of seizure, a person may have a fixed stare, just staring off into space, be unaware or confused about what's going on, have fumbling with their fingers, lip smacking movements, and these seizures are pretty short. They last about 30 seconds to a couple of minutes. They're not gonna be lasting 10 minutes or 20, something like that. They're pretty short. There can be an unusual posturing, which is movement or positioning in an arm, and these can help identify where the seizures start in the brain. So if the person is having problems with their right arm, you might want to check the left temporal lobe for some abnormalities on the EEG or with an MRI scan. One of the most beneficial neurodiagnostic tests for someone who has temporal lobe epilepsy is functional magnetic resonance imaging, or just MRI. One of the most common findings on the MRI is scarring in the temporal lobe. This is called hippocampal sclerosis. Sclerosis meaning hardening or scarring. It may look like the hippocampus on one side or both has shrunk, or is smaller. And at the bottom, here's a quick little picture of right mesial temporal sclerosis, or MTS. Another important neurodiagnostic test for a patient with suspected temporal lobe epilepsy is the EEG. In an EEG, a neurodiagnostic technologist will place electrodes on the patient's scalp, which will pick up the electrical activity in their brain. Now, if you look at the middle of the temporal lobe on the left side, which can be found in T3, T5 area. T stands for temporal lobe, and the odd numbers stand for the left side, and the even numbers stand for the right side. Those are just the quick basics of an EEG. You can see at the T3, T5 area, a spike in sharp wave, and also a phase reversal, which helps localize abnormalities in a bipolar montage. Once a patient has been confirmed to have temporal lobe epilepsy by a neurologist, they're going to want to get treated. The most common first step of treatment is to try seizure medications. Many people with temporal lobe epilepsy achieve full control of their seizures with these anti-epileptic drugs, but almost a third of people may not respond to these medicines as well. They might have bad side effects or they might just not control the seizures at all. 
Uncontrolled seizures may cause a number of problems. For example, people often re report problems with memory, socialization, and a fear of leaving their home. They also may restrict their daily activities, such as driving, because you don't want to be driving and having a seizure, that's for sure. Which, if you have to do that, then that would definitely lead to a decrease in quality of life. The second step, if anti-epileptic drugs fail to cure the seizures, then epilepsy surgery may be an option, especially when an MRI shows hippocampal sclerosis in the medial temporal lobe, and the EEGs also confirmed it by showing seizures in that same area, then the seizures may well be cured by surgery. In some cases, up to 7 out of 10 people can be seizure-free after surgery with a few problems afterwards but it's really important to get those two tests, the EEG and also the MRI to confirm that surgery could help. And another option are also different devices if surgery isn't possible. For example, if the person's memory or their speech and language are in the same spot where their seizures are occurring, then the doctors don't want to take that part of their brain out because they may well be seizure free after taking that part of the brain out, but if they can't talk, it's a bad trade off and you wouldn't, you wouldn't wanna go through life like that. It wouldn't be worth it for the surgery. So an alternative is to use a device such as vagus nerve stimulation or responsive neurostimulation. Those two may help. With responsive neurostimulation, a surgeon will implant some electrodes onto the brain which will detect when the person is having the seizure. And when they're having a seizure, it will send a pulse of electrical activity to the seizure site. And hopefully that will stop and control the seizures if the anti-epileptic drugs didn't work and also surgery is not an option. Responsive neurostimulation is probably the final option for patients with this type of epilepsy. The good news is most people aren't going to need these neurostimulation devices or having to get parts of the brain taken out. Two out of three people with temporal lobe epilepsy achieve good seizure control with the basic medications. Seizures may also go away in some children with temporal lobe epilepsy. A good outcome is most often seen in people with normal MRI scans. So they don't want to see that sclerosis. If they don't see that in the MRI, then they're most likely going to have a super good outlook and live a great, healthy life. Here are my sources, epilepsy.com, the Epilepsy Foundation. I got all my information from them. And also researchgate.com. I got the EEG from them, which, which showed the spikes and sharp waves. Thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something about temporal lobe epilepsy today. And if you like my video, make sure you hit the like button. It helps me out a lot. I love you guys. Leave any comments down below. I'll be able to answer them. I read all my comments and I will see you guys on the next video.